Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, Lord. We're not making this moment about us. But Father, we give you this moment and we can say, do what you will. So I live my hands in total adoration.
23, Luke chapter 1, we begin series, series entitled, I Believe in Miracles. Oh, yeah. Come on, Bishop, Bishop! Have a night on Thursday night, maybe on Thursday night, because I teach and prepare you for tonight or Sunday morning. When Zachariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant, went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace or my shame of having no children. Let me read it in English. He has taken <laughs> away my embarrassment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me read it in English. Okay. He has taken away my pain. Come on, Bishop. Let me read it in English. <laughs> he has given me what I did not have. Okay. All the time. All the time. That did not make sense to you in the beginning, but it will in the end. So join me when I say it. Shame on you. Shame so on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. you. Excuse me. I want to make sure I'm able to announce that the other service that we are back at 4 o'clock for a play that is written uh, by this young man and his family. Uh, they do the last play that they had was well attended, but it was a good play. I wasn't there. So this time I'm going to wake up and get there at 4 o'clock. So John, you know, because when he's famous and in Hollywood, I right. say, we knew him. Right. Yeah. And the question is, the support? Uh, Luke 1 takes us into the private lives of public people. Priests by the name of Zechariah, his wife Elizabeth. And it takes us, because I want you to see this miracle, because the miracle is more than an old person having a baby. Miracle is more than an old person having a baby. There's more that we miss, and I want, want to delve into it today because we normally concentrate on this baby and miss a huge portion of the miracle. According to the text, according to the text, we'll go home and read it later, in verse number six, it says that these two people were righteous in God's eyes and that they did were careful to obey all of God's commandments. That they had, according to the scripture, no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. So here's this couple who followed everything, did everything, and still they had lack of something. Beloved, I want you to remember this. You can be saved, sanctified, fire baptized, full of the Holy Ghost, denominationally led, Holy Ghost led, and still. Come on, Bishop. Of difficulty and shame. I'm going to preach to somebody in just a minute. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. You're going to get praise in a minute. This yeah. morning, I was led when I looked and studied the scripture to really under, for, for somebody to understand that one of the things that God did for them that she exclaims when she says he has taken my disgrace away is he gave them the miracle of changed emotions. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me because somebody who didn't have attitude all week long is going to be Somebody who ain't had joy in a long time is about to leave this place and they're not going to wait until January of December 31st talking about when the new year come in, I'm getting my joy back, <laughs> back today. Today! Yeah, I told you, I told you. Today! From the opening of the Bible, we see shame and we see disappointment. Can, can I remind you of two people, the first couple uh, on the earth, Adam and Eve, and the Bible? 
Bible says, the Bible says that they were naked and not ashamed. When they ate of the forbidden fruit, one of the first things the Bible says they did, their eyes were open and they were ashamed of their nakedness. I don't think anybody in here would argue with me in saying that there are some things you don't want anybody else to know about you. Come on, Bishop! I, I need some real people more than just Come on, Bishop! Some things that if you look back over your life, you can go, you will look back and say, I, I'm kind of ashamed that I lived like that. I'm kind of ashamed that I did this. But what they did when they became ashamed is they sold some fig leaves together to cover themselves. Now here's the problem with trying to cover up because in church, especially in church, we have a degree in covering up. We we have, we have, we got master's degrees in acting like we don't have any problems, acting like we don't go through any struggles. We got universities that teach you to hide behind a mask and never to have an emotion. And part of the reason is, is because in every church is always a nosy gossiper. Oh, come on, Bishop! They think they already know what you're crying about, but what some people don't know about some of y'all is that when you cry, it doesn't always mean something's wrong. Some of you cry because the joy that's inside of you hey! to what you have gone through in your life and that you're still making it, that there's a tear that comes out. Come on, Bishop! We have learned how to sow fig leaves together and hide our emotions. That's the reason for the excessive drug use. That's the reason for the excessive alcoholism. That's the reason for the relationship. Some people can use other people to hide behind and then get the upset when they feel like other people can't cover them. Can I help somebody? There's nobody on earth that's going to be able to cover up all of your stuff. At the end of the day, you're going to have to deal with the thing that you feel that God has not done for you yet in your life. Because everybody in here has something that when you look over your life, that you still got a prayer and petition in before the Lord. Can I help somebody on my way to heaven? But watch what Zechariah does. Because what Zechariah does teaches us today. The Bible says that although, and the Bible lets us know that they have no children, but can I show you what Zechariah kept doing? He kept on showing up to work. Let me do it again. He's a priest, so he shows up. And this is what I came to tell somebody. Keep showing up. Hey, huh? I wish you would help somebody. Keep showing up. Even when you don't feel like getting up, keep showing up. Whatever it is that God has Keep showing up. I keep sitting next to a friend. I, I said, a friend, if you don't know the person next to you, don't mess with him. But if you don't look around, tell him, keep showing up. Keep showing up. Come on. Is every time you show up, he hates every time you get one leg out of the bed. And you make your bed go around. Come on, listen. I'm going to show up. Come on, listen. Come on. You know, Come on. You know, Now you got to show up. 
today. Because the one thing I'm not going to let you do is that the devil tire you out. But everything's been so on your mind and that you don't keep showing up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep showing up. He goes up. He goes inside. And he goes in. Keep showing up. And, and it's while he's working. Yeah. See, because God will bless you when you do what you don't feel like doing. That's right. But you keep on doing it anyway. That's right. Do I have any witnesses here right now? You ain't always want to raise those kids, but God bless you anyhow. You ain't always want to do what you have to do, but God said, if you keep on showing up, I bless you out of the Lord. Well, he is there. The Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, uh, the Bible, I, I ain't making it up, the Bible said. That an angel shows up. You got to understand the same. Because shame is a feeling of embarrassment or humiliation that arises from the perception of having done something or somebody having done something to you. To make you feel dishonorable, to make you feel immoral, to make you feel improper. Uh, according to an article about very well known, people who experience shame usually try to hide the thing they feel ashamed of. And when shame is chronic, it can involve the feeling that you, fund you are fundamentally flawed. Like, what's wrong with me? The devil loves it when you say that. What's wrong with me? Why, why does everything happen to me? Why can't I catch a break? Shame can often be hard to identify, but shame can be problematic when it becomes internalized and results in an overly harsh evaluation of yourself. I'm going to help somebody because some of you have taught yourself out of one blessing after another blessing, have taught yourself out of joy, have taught yourself out of hope, and a few of you, the only time you get happy is when a Christmas tree is up. But I came to tell somebody, you ain't going to need no Christmas tree in order to feel the spirit of a blessed Savior who loves you. Because at the end of the day, it's not that this is your season, every season is your season. Who am I talking to? When it's raining outside, it's your season. When it's cold out, it's your season. Because as long as you're not breathing your body, I feel like preaching right there. I need you to help somebody tell this still. As long as I can get up in the morning, it's my seat. Shows up. Angel is there and appears. When the angel appears, he appears on the right side of the altar of incense. The right side is the side of favor and blessing. You ain't got, I don't want you talking to nobody else. You want to be yourself. I, 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 if, if you receive this word, I taught you Thursday night, it's not enough to hear the word. You've got to receive the word. You've got to believe the word. And if there's somebody here right now who will believe it and receive it, I want you to believe and receive these words. Blessings and favor. Just say it. Blessings and favor. Because you start getting God praise for it. Because that's what you're speaking into your own life. Blessings and favor. Blessings and favor. And it's not blessings and favor on the way. Blessings and favor is being right now. It's right now. But watch what happens. Right now. Right now. On the right side. The Bible says that Zachariah is shaking. That, that that he 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 is he is shaken, but the angel says to Zechariah, "Don't be afraid. God has heard your prayer." Shame when you feel defeated, when you feel undervalued and devalued for a long time. It's almost incomprehensible that God is able to do above what you can imagine He is able to do. But I'm glad you made it to church this morning because if you think that you got some people who are jealous of you last year, that ought to get ready because when God's favor is upon you, God will pick you up and He will change your shame. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I'm talking to you. Talk back to me if you know what I'm talking about. Because the angel said, God has heard your prayer. I need you to declare whatever you want. Don't talk to your neighbor, talk to yourself. Just say, self, God hears my prayers. Come on, come on. Now, if you believe me, here's your prayers. I want you to seal it up with a hallelujah. Come on, self, God hears my prayers. Hallelujah. Come on, self, God is hearing my prayer. The Bible says, He's hearing your prayer. Zachariah wants to start 
doing what we ought to do. He starts talking self -doubt. He says, how can this be? How can it happen? I'm old now. My wife is well along in years. Gabriel, I have to go, I have to go. I'm going to cut no, you don't. Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel says, who do you think you're talking to? Come on, Bishop! It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled. And Dr. Gabriel said, when you leave out of this room, you ain't even going to be able to speak because you doubt in God. Let me know somebody. And I can't have you speaking against what God is getting ready to do in your life. But some people have been so defeated for so long that it's hard to believe that God God is able to do what he promised he would do. I need somebody, that's why they're telling you that God won't let you tell nobody about what he's getting ready to do in your life because he knows that you will destroy your own blessing because he's the first person that comes along and tells you you can't do it. You do it in your head. Ten people can tell you you can't. And then the one tells you you can't. Now you get in your head and you begin to self-doubt God. But I can't tell you that's why everybody can't know your stuff. Notice his wife doesn't get pregnant. 
until he finishes working. And it seems as if his emotions have changed. Wow. There were some things you can't do while you stress. Bishop! Bishop! Come on, Bishop! Come on now! I love this man. I love him to death. There are some dreams that God is going to do. And you're going to worry more than you worship. It's hard to do what you need to do. So it was after he finished his work and he believed
Without him. I put somebody who may not be saved today. Who somebody who wants a relationship with you? Yeah. Healthy, valuable, worthy. But today, today.
Yes, he will. God's going to do it again. And again and again. Thank you for this incredible time. Thank you. The reason we're not afraid to give a benediction is because we know you go home with us. The rest of this day, if not this week, we'll reflect on the word that has been given. We will not only reflect on the word. Trying to find my tie. Where's my tie at? Amen, Bishop. Amen. Amen. Y'all see my name on mine. What's that say? Veronica. When you pay your tithes, faithful, you get your name on your envelope. And I just thank God I can pay mine. Thank you.
Yeah.